It's not fair. 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 I wonder what you think is unfair. Perhaps if you're uh, watching this with uh, parents or with brothers and sisters, you might want to talk about what things you say are not fair. I wonder. Now, I asked uh, some friends of mine to tell me what their children say is not fair. And this is what they said. They said going to bed at different times to brothers and sisters, having different amounts of pocket money to brothers and sisters, less time on technology as their friends. Someone said that it's not fair when people don't share their toys. Someone else said when people don't have the same, but they both deserve it. Like some people have lots of food and other people don't. Someone else said, when my sister gets more snacks or my sister's schoolwork is much easier. A friend of mine's three-year-old said, when we can't have chocolate biscuits. Someone else said that we can't go to school to see our friends. Her brother said that I can't go to my friend's house. And some other people said, if something isn't shared equally, all people should be treated the same or if someone else has more than somebody else. Were any of those the same as yours? What do you think is unfair? Now, I have been at home thinking, when we come back to school, perhaps we ought to have some new school rules. So I've been coming up with a great plan of some new school rules. I'm yet to go through them with Mr Gibbons and for him to agree with them, but I personally think they're great school rules. So here they are. I want you to see what you think. Right. Here are my school rules. New ones that I'm going to propose to Mr Gibbons that we put into place um, when we're all back to normal. I hope you will agree what great rules they are. So firstly, children with brown eyes are more important than any other children in school. Only children with brown eyes can use the adventure playground, the trim trail, at playtimes. At lunchtime, only children with brown eyes can sit at the tables. Everyone else needs to stand up. Children with brown eyes can bring sweets to school for snack instead of fruit. And only children with brown eyes can read to the teacher. What do you reckon of my new rules? What did you think of my rules? Did you like them? Do you think they were fair? Unfair? Maybe if you haven't got brown eyes, you might think that they were slightly unfair. Or maybe if you did have brown eyes, maybe you quite liked my new school rules. I'm going to tell you a few stories about situations for children in the world that actually are really unfair. Jesus had something to say about injustice in the Beatitudes. These are his words. Those who want to do right more than anything else are happy. God will fully satisfy them. In many parts of our world, there are some really, really unfair things happening just because you're a child or a girl or from a certain place. Now you lot might moan sometimes about going to school. But many children around the world don't even ever get the chance to go to school, which means they can't get a good job or even any job later in life. So actually, in some places, my mean school rules might be a bit more real. Listen to these stories. Sometimes you don't get to go to school simply because you're a girl. In Sierra Leone, a country in Africa, 73% of girls don't get to go to secondary school because they live too far away or they have to get married. In some parts of Uganda, almost half the girls can't read. Although the Ugandan government introduced free schooling in 2007, the cost of uniforms, transport, books, stationery and the school lunches mean that many girls can't stay on at school. Often their families decide that it's more important that the boys get an education. 
Many families simply can't afford to send their children to school. 25 million children in Pakistan don't get to go to school because their parents need them to work to earn money to help support their family. Many of you will know about the war in Syria that's forced millions of people to leave their homes and their country. Refugee children are permitted to attend Egyptian schools, but going to school costs money. A third of refugee families struggle to even pay for food and shelter and simply cannot afford the extra cost to send their children to school. You may be aware of the news over the last few weeks uh, about George Floyd and his treatment because of the colour of his skin. You may have seen images of the protests and people standing up with messages that black lives matter. In fact, all lives matter. It all seems very unfair and such a huge problem, like scales that are weighed down on one side. But what if we could change all of this? Now, in the Bible, it says, do what is fair and right to others. That's a verse found in the book of Micah, verse six to eight. Do what is fair and right to others. Those weighing scales perhaps are, un, are tipped one way to show actually that there is huge injustice, huge unfairness in the world. I wonder what we could do to put some weights on the other side, to equal that out, to tip the balance back to make sure that things are fair and things are just for the people in this world. I feel like today's assembly has been a little bit more serious, but I feel really strongly actually that this is a really serious subject. Being fair, justice is so important in the world in which we live. Jesus' words in the Beatitudes remind us that justice is important to God. Jesus also said that God rewards people who act justly. We found out that life in our world today really isn't fair. For millions of children all over the world, for loads of different people from different parts of the world, different backgrounds, different races, life is not fair. I wonder what you think is not fair. I wonder what might you do today that shows that what you are doing is fair and right to others. I wonder how we might make a change in this world. Okay, this week's challenge is a little bit different from previous week's challenges. This week's challenge is for you to have a discussion at home with your family maybe call your friends, maybe call your grandparents. I want us to think seriously about this idea of unfairness, injustice. I want us to think about where we might see injustice in our school community. When we imagine us all back together again in school, where is there situations that maybe perhaps show that things aren't fair, that things are unjust? Where is there injustice in our local community, in the areas that we live, in the uh, villages or the um, estates that we live in? Where is there injustice? Where is there unfairness? In the city of Lincoln, where is there injustice? Where is there unfairness? If we think wider even more and look at our world, we've heard some stories today in Assembly about so much injustice and unfairness of children, of people of different races, of different religions, of different backgrounds. Where in the world do we see injustice? These are huge, huge questions. And we might feel that just us on our own, little individual people really can't do much. But this week particularly, as we've seen lots in the news about injustice, I want us to think seriously about our part. What can we do to readdress those scales? What can we do to perhaps try and equal things out in our small way of making sure that life is fair, life is just, 
just like um, the Bible tells us where it says, do what is fair and right to others. How can we make sure that we're playing our part? Now, as usual, I'm going to finish with a prayer um, and I'd love you to join in with me. And if you agree what I'm sa- with what I'm saying, then I'd love you to add your amen at the end. Dear God, thank you that in your kingdom, life will be fair for everyone and that justice is really important to you. Help us to do whatever we can to make life fair for others. Amen. Brilliant. That's it for this week. I look forward to seeing you next week, um, next week's Thursday Assembly. Um, But until then, have a great week. Look after yourselves and stay safe. Take care. Bye.